one of the best small hiking or hand saws that uh, I've ever used in my life. I tell you, I've used this thing from the day my buddy Gary gifted it to me and it still cuts like nobody's business. Great little saw. I mean, look how small it is. What a great saw. It really is. This is the, uh, the Baco Laplander. Fantastic saw. Fits in any pack that I've had. I usually put it in the side pouch, side pocket there. And uh, so, been over here for a, uh, a while. No mosquitoes, but there has been a couple horse flies kind of bothering me. That seems to be pretty common over here. At least every time I've been over here, I, uh, I have a problem with horse flies. But I've been working on some videos and I got some really nice stuff, especially this here to show all of you uh, soon, not quite yet. This is from Go Outfitters. It will be coming out very soon. Fits right there, perfect. I have the Rush 24 with me today. I've been using, uh, you know, like a lot of you guys know, like I review gear, right? I review a lot of backpacks. Backpacks or nylon goods or soft goods, if you will, kind of seem to be my thing, you know? Um, and every one of them is a good pack. Every single pack you see on my channel, if I was to have that one pack and nothing else, no other pack, someone said, here you go, this is all you have, I'd be fine. I, I would. I'd be absolutely fine. But that's not the way it is. That's not life. <laughs> right? I find myself going back to the Rush 24 every time. When I'm in between backpack reviews after I've used it for a while, whether it be in the woods or as an EDC bag, when I'm in between backpack reviews, I find myself with the 24 more than any other uh, backpack. I really do. And uh, I made a review when I was here about the way I'm kind of dressing this up. I got some BDS tactical pouches on there. And as always, VanQuest pouches on the inside holding all my, uh, my, my systems, my kits. But I really like the way I have this set up. I think I have everything. I tend to hang stuff in trees whenever I get to a location. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I get to a spot, I have to like walk around the perimeter for about 20 minutes collecting all my crap. Another BDS Tactical. This is the uh, single mag pouch. Holds a uh, magazine, a multi-tool, a knife, a flashlight, whatever you want to put in there. And uh, I, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I hold a multi-tool, personally. So, been over here for a while, working on some reviews, some gear reviews. Laid down in a hammock for a little while. And uh, I tell you, I understand when I'm out with Gary, when he gets in his hammock, he really does. He, he passes out. Oh, this looks crooked. Or I gotta fix that. Um, there's no tension on. I usually, I just, I like them for some reason, but I never have them tight. Anyway, uh, so Gary gets here, and he, I tell you, he gets in his hammock and he's <laughs> snoring away. Unless I'm, blah, 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 poor Gary listens to me talk the whole time I'm here, but. Um, Yeah, you know, <clears throat> the reason why I'm making this video here, I kind of wanted to talk about that shooting. Not the politics of it. Not how it was handled or is being handled. Not was there two, three, four shooters or one. I don't want to talk about whether or not bump, bump fire stock should or should not be legal. I, I, I don't want to get into that, right? Um, what I do find fascinating maybe that's not the right word is how people reacted good and bad i think i think when 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 the you know what hits the fan or in a situation like that 
I think a lot of people, like some people you would never guess, and then people that you, you would certainly expect to step in, but I think people helping other people is just absolutely incredible. I mean, the stories of guys, one guy stole a pickup truck <laughs> and uh, stole a pickup truck. I think he was a Marine. There was a truck there, happened to have keys in it. I don't know why, but he took the truck and they were literally using that to go back and forth, rushing people. I mean, 20, 30, I think 40 people, maybe that he brought back and forth to the hot. I mean, just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Left a truck somewhere. It was covered in blood in the bed of it and inside the truck. And if I do recall correctly, I could be wrong. I think the owner just said, I just want the keys back. That's, that's it. It's something like he really didn't care, you know. Uh, the stories are just incredible. But what I really want to talk about with that is more or less what you would do how you would handle that if you were there if you were a spectator at the concert you're watching the concert and that happened luckily or hopefully you wouldn't be the first few that, to get hit you had opportunity to react how would you react that's kind of what i think and i do that a lot whenever i go out when i go into a store a restaurant i don't really do that often anymore but when we would when i would go places with or without my family i would always think about always if right now something happened roof fell in or a shooter or whatever what would you do what would you do if there was a fight up at the front of the store uh someone's like just tackled uh uh, uh, uh you know someone that works there was hurting them what how would you react you know i'm constantly role playing in my head what i would do and that's a lot like, uh, you, well, you, you just using visualization. When I used to fight a lot, when I used to do tournaments and travel and do tournament scenes, fighting, um, I would in my head picture, I would picture an entire fight from beginning to end. And it helped. It helped a lot. You know, obviously you got to be get out there on the mat, in the ring, on the floor, wherever, and practice, practice, and practice, practice, and practice. And when you think you got it, you practice some more and more and more and more. And more. But uh, sitting down, meditating, thinking, closing your eyes, think about picturing the fight, what, what the best fight you could have, what it would look like. And I do the same exact thing when I'm out. And I think very negatively, unfortunately, I think what would happen if right now something, you know, how would you react? What would you do? And every scenario for me is different. Am I with my family? Yes or no. Is it just me and my boys? Yes or no. Um, can I get my family away and then help safely? Yes or no. You know, like all this stuff goes through my head. And um, it never ends. It never, never ends. And when I saw that, as terrible it was, I did the same thing. I'm like, if you were there... And the first volley of rounds coming, what would you do? How would you react? Oh. And I have some theories, and I'm not saying anybody did or did do anything wrong. I'm not here to judge people or, or anything like I already said. How would I react? And I'm very curious how you would react. This is what I want to talk about on the way to my car. So... First, I want to say, I've never been in a situation like that. Like, I, I have guns, a few guns. I go shooting, or I used to a lot. I don't much anymore. Um, you know, I'm just someone that really, like, thinks about this stuff, you know? I, I'm not a prepper. I'm not, I just prepare for just common life, whatever. And, and this, obviously, active shooting is something we need to think about unfortunately <clears throat> but i've never been in a situation like that i hope that i never am i truly do believe that if i am i'm somebody that will make a difference i really do believe that i know about guns i usually have on me now i usually have a handgun but at the same time there's a lot I don't know. I'm very, I have a saying that I'm very comfortable with what I know, very confident in what I know, 
and very comfortable in what I don't know. I'm not going to tell you I know or can do something if I don't know it or I can't do it. I have no problem telling you I don't know what I'm doing. I'm in over my head and so on. Um, I've never been in a situation like that. I've been in some situations, again, nothing like that. No guns were involved, but I really, I, I was very level-headed and I, I did a great job. I know I did. Uh, I guess for me, when I see that, when I watch that video, all of them, I watch a lot of videos on that shooting, I'm thinking to myself, like, what would I do if I was it? Now, I don't go to concerts. The last couple my wife and I would do was so terrible. We had such a, there was a fight right next to us. I, one concert, I had a woman sitting there dish, spilling beer. Now, I don't drink or smoke. And I got people smoking, even though you're not supposed to. There was a fight near us. A guy's climbing on top of me to get away from police. And my wife, um, get away from police. <laughs> they were climbing on top of me and my wife to get away from the police. Uh... Smoking and it just it's disgusting. I just I don't like it We just don't we don't ever since we had children one of my child if I mentioned before uh, my son my oldest he's, he's a bit of a He's complicated, okay, so we've been to a couple restaurants with him and it just turns into a nightmare And I just I don't want to deal with it, you know uh, so we don't. My wife and I don't like movie theaters. We don't like concerts. We don't like that stuff. Honestly, we just don't. Not because of what may happen, but the fact is I just, people are so rude and disrespectful now. I don't want to deal with it. I just can't. I can't. I have enough discipline to not lose control, but I, I get it. You know, I really do. And, I, and again, I'm not condoning anybody, hurting anybody, or going on a mass killing of any kind. I'm not. But I get it. I really do. I understand when someone just, 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 fuck it. Sorry for the language. And just go. I get it. I trust me. I get it. You know? I wish people were stronger. There isn't a day that goes by that somebody doesn't piss me off. Every single day, anywhere I go, somebody pisses me off. But luckily, I'm a man of discipline. I, 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 I don't look good in an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> I, 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 I won't do anything like that unless it's purely self-defense. And if it is, look out, right? Because it's, <laughs> once that, flip, that switch is flipped. And yes, I'm rambling like I always do. <sighs> the shooting. Once people realized what was going on, there was a large number of people not moving from what I saw. Large number of people getting down laying down now obviously you don't know where the rounds are coming from right so you get down you get your head out of the you know the air you know get down get low which unfortunately where the shooter was getting down laying on the ground doesn't work but i'll tell you something like i truly believe and quickly assess get out and i know there's a certain system or training for that or words for that get out and that situation, providing I wasn't hit, because I know I'd be trying to help people, family, friends first, get out, and then if I can, I'm gonna help people, but. I was thinking, not running, and I guess what I'm thinking is after you kind of understand where it's coming from, because I watched more than enough videos where people are hiding and they knew where they, this is when they knew where the rounds are coming from. <clears throat> I'm thinking darkness in that situation. I'm under the stage and I know, I know rounds can go through, you know, a lot. I do. I'm, I'm a shooter. I own guns and you know, I know what a two, two, three or five, five, six round or three Oh wait. I know, I know what they can do. But I'm thinking shadows, darkness, you don't see me. When the, all the crowd is running one way, I'm probably running the other way. Or at least not like if they're running north, I'm not running south. I'm going to run east or west, right? Now, again, 
this is providing we know where the shots are coming from because I saw large groups of people all running and then brrr, and then uh, half a dozen people fall to the ground you know I'm like where are they going why don't they I saw tents I saw I saw darkness I saw like shadows I'd be up against objects I'd be in the shadows you can't shoot what you don't see you know he's looking for people I'm guessing, I'm just guessing. He's looking for people. He wants large uh, number of people, you know, large groups, which is why he went there in the first place, right? Instead of your local Burger King, you know? I'd be going for the shadows. I'd be going not necessarily the opposite direction of where everyone else is running, but at least away from where everybody else is running. A large, everybody hunkered together is not very good. It sounds good. It sounds, you know, you know, you increase the number of targets, then there's less targets possibly. My personal thinking, I'm going for the shadows, wherever that is. I'm going down. I'm under the stage. I'm going up against the wall, the wall closest to the shooter. Um... His eye's going to be on the group of people running, the hordes of people running, you know? And this is based on just my own thinking and all the videos that I've watched. I wouldn't, I just wouldn't. I, I would, I guess, I guess I would run for cover run for shadows run for the darkness you can't see me you can't get me you know uh look i fought for many years again i'm not i'm not saying i'm some active shooter specialist but there's two things or three things that i know are very powerful in a fight in a self-defense situation your eyes i take out your eyes you can't see me you can't fight me right your throat. You can't breathe. You can't fight me. Right? And your legs. Your knees. All I need is one shot to one of your knees. If you can't stand, you can't fight me. Eyes, breathing, knees. Obviously, there are caveats to every one of those. Every situation's different. Weapon, you know what I mean? Like, I know those. My, in, in a fighting situation, is to remove your weapons. I'm not going to stand there and exchange punches to your face. I want to remove your weapon, whether it be your arm, your hand, your foot, your leg. If I have to blind you, I will. I will. But anyway. So that's what I'm thinking when I'm seeing this and I'm watching that. It was at night, as you know. There's a lot of people running. There's a lot of darkness. I would have ran for the darkness and then stop, get low, out of the, out of the, the, where everybody else is, where all the lights were, into darkness. And then assess, move, assess, move, assess. That's kind of how I think. I carry a bag everywhere I go. I'm serious, everywhere I go. I have a pretty decent survival kit, uh, first aid kit, med kit in my bag. Oh, that's my car. <laughs> I'm looking down like, who the hell parked there? <laughs> I did! <laughs> I, so I'm also thinking, I carry, I carry two tourniquets every day. I'm not kidding. In my first aid kit, I have two tourniquets, sometimes three. I do. Did anybody have a tourniquet? I know they had shirts and I know that, you know, I, ca I carry a thick um, uh, rigger's belt, a gun belt. I don't know if you carry or if you have one of those, but you, you will know that they, they're not, it's not a very good tourniquet, right? Real thin nylon, you know, wispy, whatever belt. That'd be great. I just bothered a crap load of chipmunks. They're all taken off down this rock, <laughs> down this wall. Wow. There's a lot of them. Um, 
I carry tourniquets. Did anybody there have a tourniquet? You know, a proper tourniquet, rat's tourniquet, uh, any one of them, you know? Cat, rat. I would certainly be helping people with those, you know? Um, I tell you, there was something going on here with a bunch of squirrels and chipmunks. A love fest? I don't know because I, they all just took off down the wall. The three chip, three squirrels over there just darted up a tree. I mean, holy! I, just, I seriously just interrupted something. There's something. There's a love fest going on here on top of this wall. Right there. They all keep running. They all ran down that wall, and then a bunch of squirrels just ran up that tree there. But um. So I guess, one, I would never be in that situation because I don't go to those kinds of places. I just don't. And I don't do it out of fear. Oh, you should never live your life. I don't like those places. That's why I don't go. I don't go because I'm, I'm afraid. I don't go because I live in fear. I just don't like those places. I really don't. But if I was, and I was there, I, I think, what would I do? How can I react? And I think that's what I do. I would go to the shadows, become one with the shadows, out of sight, and then assess, and then move, and then assess. And then I'm just not going to run blindly, you know? So, that's what I think about. And I'm curious, if you want to, leave down in below a comment. If you were there, and hopefully you weren't hit with the first volley of rounds, and or right away you figured out, crap, this is what's going on, this is where it's coming from, what would you do? I'm curious. Do you have training in that? Are you taught what to do? Uh, you know? Um, well, what would you do? We can all learn from that, you know? It was horrible, it was terrible. There are lives that will never, ever, ever be the same. Those of us that were not there, there's things that we can do. I won't get into all the politics and this and that, but as far as learning from it, what can we do? What can you do? Like, what would you do? If you were there, what do you think you would do? That's what I wanna know. See that down there? See my car down there? <laughs> I usually park up the road after walkaways and I park up there in the little pocket area. But I knew there's this little, little cutoff right there, this little, little spot, and I backed in. And when I was just coming down, I was talking, I'm like, who the hell? Oh, that's me. <laughs> you see my car, my red car down there? That's it. Anyway. I hope you're all well. I hope you who's watching this was not affected. I hope you weren't there and affected that way. And I really do hope that none of you, my subscribers or anybody for that matter, lost a loved one or someone you know, just a friend. It just, it's terrible. It really is. All right, everybody. So be safe. Get out as often as you can, because as the old cliche goes, we never ever know when we won't be here anymore. We won't. I hope you're all well. All right?